Ladies and gentlemen, presenting John Lynch for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Jake Lynch. Thank you, Jake. Such an honor to have you as my presenter. Thank you, Herm. What a humbling honor. First, let me say, nothing about my Hall of Fame journey has been easy. I waited eight years as a finalist, and then David Baker tells me I'm following Peyton Manning. Thanks a lot, David. Peyton and the rest of our 2021 class, congratulations. What a privilege to be inducted into this brotherhood the Pro Football Hall of Fame with all of you. As everyone up here will attest, it takes a lot of belief to get to this stage. However, belief is not something that simply happens. It has to be nurtured a million times over. A note, a pat on the back, a piece of advice, coaching. These are the things that foster belief in ourselves. Today, I will recognize those who have done this for me. I would not be here today if not for one person, my wife and my best friend, Linda Lynch. I met Linda in the seventh grade in our hometown of San Diego. Linda, you have inspired me as a man, a father, a husband, and a leader. For 15 years as an NFL player and nine years with the NFL on Fox, Linda wrote a note to me that I read before every single game. She didn't ever miss one. Her notes always calmed me, focused me, and drove me to be my best self. Babe, I, know, I love you more than you will ever know, and I'm so thankful and grateful to share this life-changing moment with you. Our four amazing children, Jake, Lindsay, Lily, and Leah, each one of you, in your own special way, has provided me inspiration that cannot be described even with the full definition of love. My pride in each of you is endless. I hope that I have helped you grow your belief in yourself the way you have for me. My parents, John and Kathy, your standards and expectations were always high, your love always unconditional. The Catholic faith that you instilled in me and blessed me with is my guiding light. Where would I be without it? Where would I be without both of you? Mom and Dad, I'm truly grateful and I love you. My sister and brother, Kara and Ryan, you have always supported me. Please know where you live in my heart. I went to Stanford University as a quarterback and a baseball player. After two years as a number two quarterback, I was tired of that. I decided the best way for me to get on the football field was to convert to safety. I want to thank the late, great Denny Green for guiding me through this life-altering decision. Later that year, I was drafted in the second round of the Major League Baseball draft by the Florida Marlins and believed that baseball was going to be my future. Enter the late, great Bill Walsh. Coach Walsh had returned to Stanford as our head coach in 1992 when Coach Green accepted the head, head job for the Minnesota Vikings. One day I received a call from Bill. Hey John, this is Bill Walsh. I've been studying our defense last year and John, you were our best defensive player. Shocked, I said to him, Coach, with all due respect, I played safety for one year and I played half the snaps. How can you possibly arrive at that opinion? He said simply, the film. I watched it and you can be a Pro Bowl safety in the NFL. Well, when I returned to school, in true Bill Walsh fashion, he not only told me, he showed me. He showed me a tape of me making a play, then perhaps a play of perhaps the greatest safety of all time, Ronnie, Ronnie Lott, making a similar play. There are only five plays on that tape, but after watching it, I was all in. Coach Walsh, you gave me the confidence to follow my heart to an NFL career. Without you, 
I'm not standing on this stage today. Peter Goskey, you were more than just someone who trained me. You taught me how to outwork my competition. That gave me the mental and physical edge. There were so many other coaches who were indispensable to my success. Monty Kiffin, John Gruden, Rod Marinelli, and Mike Tomlin among them. One special human being who saw something in me before I saw it in myself is my co-presenter, Herm Edwards. Herm had a vision for the way I should play the safety position. He encouraged me to play with the passion, the joy, physicality, and instincts that define my game. Herm, you were also the first to tell me that I could have a bus someday in Canton, but only if I believed it. We're here, Herm. <laughs> Hall of Fame coach Tony Dungy had such a profound, profound impact on me on and off the field. This is a true story. In his first meeting as a head coach of the Buccaneers, he said to us, our job is to win championships here in Tampa. But if that's all we do, we will not have done enough. He went on to talk about the responsibility we had to give back to our community. Tony, I thank you for being the man that you are. A sincere thank you to the Glazer family and everyone at the Buccaneers for making my first 11 years in the NFL so meaningful and helping us to bring a world championship to Tampa with Super Bowl 37. To the late great owner Pat Bolin, a true Hall of Famer, to the Bolin family, Mike Shanahan, and everybody at the Denver Broncos, thanks for giving me such a great landing spot to play the final four years of my career. Now, over the last four seasons, I've had the honor to serve as the general manager of the San Francisco 49ers. Thank you to Kyle Shanahan, to Jed York, and the entire York family for having the faith in me that you do. Rondé Barber, your time's coming, man. You're going to be here. Mike Allstott, Champ Bailey, Rod Smith. These are just a few of the great players that I was blessed to call teammates. There are so many to acknowledge. But two guys back here had my, had my back from day one. Together, we forged an unbreakable bond, and I'm overjoyed to join you two in Canton. Before concluding, I want to state the National Football League is the greatest metaphor for life that I've ever known. It challenges each and every one of us who plays this great game in every way possible. Everything about the game is hard and tests your will. It compels every man who puts on a uniform to not only do their best, but to be their best. In football, we quickly discover that we're only as strong as our weakest link. And if we're to achieve the goals that we set for ourselves, we must all learn to play together and pull together. Each of us comes from a different walk of life, but when we huddle up, we huddle up as a team. It doesn't matter where we come from or your background. All that matters is the fulfillment of one goal, victory, Tonight, I advocate that we take the lead of football and huddle up as a people, as a great nation. Let's find the common ground through our shared values. Let's celebrate and learn from our differences. Derek Brooks from Pensacola, Florida. Amen. Warren Sapp from Apopka, Florida. Amen. And John Lynch from Solana Beach, California have. So too can all of you. Thank you to David Baker, to Ira Kaufman and the Pro Football Hall of Fame Selection Committee my beautiful family, dear friends, coaches, teammates, and all of the fans. I love you. As my journey illustrates, one person can make a difference. I encourage each and every one of you to be that person who provides someone else with the belief that they too can be great. May God bless you all. Thank you.